Well, let me hold you guys' feet to the fire. Let's let's build some decks together and just let all people. Right. Let's all kind of just kind of brainstorm. We can let's decide you know a theme or what we want to do, and then let's start building. And I think that if we just kind of talk through the building of two decks, that would be absolutely invaluable for new players. Just kind of right. hear the thought process. Let's that. start with one clan and one inner sphere. I think yeah, that's let's do fair. Battle of right. Luthians, perfect. Is uh, Smoke, Smoke Jaguar, Jaguar going to hold up? Arena. That's not a very... Is, I, it wasn't it's better Smoke than you might think. Okay. At a, at a casual level, especially, it's not bad. Right. There's not Can a we... lot of creativity, but I mean, it's fine mix. Well, I definitely want to make sure that we can build two balanced decks because we also want to build that. I want to build two decks that are thematic, that are fun, but are also going to balance so that, you know, um, people can really enjoy kind of a, a little scenario. I think that'd be awesome. Or maybe well, like a, a, Ronin, right. a Ronin Wars, you know, deck, you know, get a Curita so, you know, versus. So I think, I think the Smoke Jag Wars, a uh, Smoke Jag deck has got to start with an asset base of AMT. Um, it'll make card selection easier. And we all know that the smoke jags suck at logistics anyway. They didn't bring any logistics to their fights. <laughs> too good. Oh, man. I think I do have an ATL smoke jag right deck, but yeah, ATM is probably a lot easier deck, both to make with real cards and just. Oh, to... we lost you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I lost the end of Peter the Peter there. I think it depends what you want to do with the smoke jaguars because if you allow the smoke jaguars to have the ten uh, elemental points, um, I want L. Yeah, I want well, as one sure. of my resources because Paul if you Moon have very good. exactly that that's where I'm at. I'm at because I I would like I have a smoke jaguar deck that plays logistics because I want to play Paul Moon and I want my elemental points. Sure, I, I guess that makes sense. But if we're trying to bias towards relatively easy to physically construct, I think we should try to not work with Arsenal or Crusade, which means no elemental points. Fair enough. Let's, okay. Yeah, think of. So all right, Some of so, their later Grendels are in there, but other than that, I think, because uh, the AT, what is it, Grendel D, is like six assembly tactics, um, is pretty good, but I think that's also Arsenal. But I think we can do AMT. If we if we pull it back and we and we say, okay, well, I mean, is it reasonable to do a, a thematic deck, you know, maybe use a different thematic deck and, and use the cards more in the, let's say, everything before Arsenal? I think you'd do perfectly fine with a Smoke Jag Battle of Luthien deck before. Awesome. For Arsenal. All right, let's do it. All right. Um, so what? Here's what are pulling out Mordell's deck builder? Yeah, I'm All gonna right. pull up Lackey. <laughs> okay, I was just gonna write it. <laughs> I'll write well, it. I gotta make I'll sure take, I'm not I'll be the note taker from a later set. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's abandon that. Let's let's like well, we can include things from all set, and then maybe we can put a little side note of put this in, in instead of that when we're done with it. You know, we can look at what we build, and then we can. All right. So I guess we start with mix, right? Are we are we settled on resource or are we an A? I, resources serve the mix. I, I agree. It's AMT. Yeah. It's AMT. Yeah. Okay. AMT. It's AMT. So your resource base, you're looking at 24 resources, um, yep. and then you're looking at depending on uh, the buyouts of your mechs, uh, how many of each one of those. Um, of course, with the black market twin actions and the four war funds, because we're going to be playing with Arsenal. We want a consistent deck. I want my black market connections from Crusade and I want four I want six war funds in there. Let's let's also set ourselves the limit of four maximum of four of any card because uh, people are gonna so people especially with limited card sets are gonna struggle to get to six. Even okay. if some comments. Do we, we even want to say four? You know, is it just variety seems fun? Do, you we know, could we do say two, three. Um two, three. two is probably a little too little. I, I imagine that, that oh, that's Gustav's cringing there. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to have the consistent. You're losing a lot of consistency if we go down to two. Well, that's might what I'm as well saying. Play a Highlander. If Let's if just play a Highlander. <laughs> build a Highlander deck. If both It'll of be them fun. Can <laughs> Jags even make if, a Highlander deck? If, in if we keep the principle for both decks, Arsenal. yeah. If we keep the principle for both <laughs> decks, then uh, hopefully All right. it'll, it'll hold. All right. So why don't <laughs> why don't we start units. with why don't we start with with our backline? What uh, I would say that a clan backline should probably have, be of moderate speed, and I would uh, I would put up for bid the Vulture C and the Man of War Prime as being good backliners. So five drop. You like the five drops? Fours and fives. Uh, the three three armor seven structure four attack of the Man of War is one of my favorite uh, mid mid tier uh, tier two. Uh, max for clan. So I agree. Let's put those in. Those are easy to come by. Let's do that. So that's our, I like those for five. For our five I don't drop. suppose, I don't suppose any of us here actually are familiar with enough with the lore to know what mechs are common in the Smoke Jaguar to Mon. 
Um, uh, Koshi, Ryokin, Cauldron Born, Warhawk, Masakari. They later added the Shadow Cat and the Grendel. Um, what am I missing? All right, so you can, be our, I mean, you can be our backup the, and, and keeping us honest there, Pierre. All of the core, <laughs> all of the core um, most of the core Omnimex from 3050 um, I can be found in reasonable quantities in all two months. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I would. was the other one. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. So I would say a good opening bid it would be four Man of War Primes and four Vulture Cs. Um, there's, there's nothing to argue about with any of these mechs. These are all good mechs at a modern yeah, These are staples. Stage. Agreed. Okay. All right. Where do we want to go for fast? I want all of the Dasher Primes. Yeah, I figured you would. As many as I can put in there. All right. Four Dasher Primes for speed and harassment. And then, That's of course, two, playing... two costs with assembly oh. buyout. They're, they're fantastic. And then Another I'm assuming we're going to go with four Fenris Primes as well. Yes, yep. absolutely. That's an AMT. So notice we've I got to 16, with armor. 16 of our 24 mechs, and we haven't left the limited set at all. And we're also, I think, all just comments and uncommons. Yep, we're all comments. Yeah, we're all comments. Actually, there aren't any uncommons so far. It's all common. All okay. common cards. Perfect. This Perfect. is one of the reasons the clans are really solid in limited because they had a lot of mm. solid, uh, easy, you know, easy to play common mechs. It's very easy to build a cheap, effective clan deck. Where should we go from there? We've got eight more mechs. We need some somebody to, to finish the push. Um, I think we need a few stalemate breakers. We could do two of those. I was thinking too. Um... So you've got 16 mechs with four attack. Oh, no, eight mechs with four attack, eight mechs with three attack, right? That's the magic Making number magic seven. Number seven. So that's yep. the magic yep. number seven. So you have a lot of flexibility from here. Um, you might want a fourth point of damage in the fast attack slot or else a pair of twos. There's an argument that it's a cheaper three damage mech in the medium slot is also viable. And, yeah, I might end it with a couple of big siege breakers like uh, Nigerians or Massacaris or something. Okay. So like I like those three drop uh, 173 with one length one long range it fits our AMT. Uh, uh Nova Revised Nova C? Is that a Nova C? Nova C Revised is AMT 173 one long range. One long G range. Yep. yep. I like that. Wait. Nova Black Hawk C. C. Black Black Hawk C. C. Yeah. 173 3 Black for AMT. Um it, it's Almost I'm, not, a I'm not sold on that. You're losing. You're losing. It has jump. It has jump. I'm <laughs> just telling you, jump. Jump is a hugely underrated thing when you're going to be running those those risky combat jumps. Right. All right. So we're, we're going Black down Hawk that road. What are we doing? We're doing two Black Hawk Cs. Is that what it was? I think. I mean, yeah, because you can play around with it as a baseline when. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm building a deck, you know, I, I won't really settle on anything. I'll say, okay, this looks good on paper. And then you play it against yourself a few times and you say, okay, do these mechs actually gel well in practice? You know, can I reliably go turn three Blackhawk C, turn four Vulture C, turn five um, Man, Man of War? War. Yeah. Yep, you want to curve out. And, and, you know, if I do hit those curves, do I feel comfortable in attack and defense starts becoming the next thing. You know, consistency is great, but also... Am I flexible in the way I attack and uh, defend? And I think with the uh, Fenris Prime and the Blackhawk C, you have a pretty good three-drop slot. Because um, Fenris Prime is perfectly fine being used as a medium mech, too. I mean, it's tough enough that you can mostly use it as a pseudo-medium to attack with as well. It's worth well, noting I, that if you're playing with the Counter-Strike version of the Blackhawk C, you've got a bit of a problem because it doesn't have jump. It doesn't have jump. It's the revised that's that a, has it. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. So I, we upgrade if you can. <laughs> right. Just saying. <laughs> um, Do we want a couple of hard-hitting, expensive fast mechs? I was thinking, uh, like the Grendel's. Grendel Prime, two Grendel Primes, maybe. I'd be okay with that. They hit a flat seven, don't they? With they the have five over each two plus two. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the 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 seven on one one body. That's good. In fact, okay. I prefer having them over a Masakari, honestly, because then you have the ability to hunt down. True. Uh, yeah. So I mean, we're, we need uh, four more. We've got black, two Blackhawk Seas and two Grendel Primes. Um, I still think we should have something super heavy in the back line. Let's just, just throw one like BMF that. in for fun. Stone Rhino. 
one. Stone Rhino for fun. Siege Breaker. It's cost L, doesn't it? It's oh, like my favorite. Shucks. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite assaults. It's so well accosted, but yeah, it cost it, ALM, cost which L, is almost unplayable. Right. Yeah, it's unplayable uh, unless yeah, you're done. Massacre A is a very good cheap budget assault. It doesn't have the long range, which I really like to see, but and it doesn't have jump. That is, like I mean, Massacre A is good for budget, and I think it's unlimited. And what about the besides, supernova? What about the supernova? 10 4 A 4 A M 4 T 3 9 7 overheat 5 plus 3 attack. It has jump and it has long range too. It's fair. It's fair, yeah. You can play it. All right, so maybe one supernova and one Masakari A. And uh, uh, listen, if you're listening at home, Dude, try them both out and see which one you like and get a second yeah, one, whichever right. one you like. They're both that, commons, aren't they? Uh, the, yeah, they're both commons. We haven't yeah. hit an uncommon. No, the Blackhawk C is an uncommon. Yeah. And the gr- but that's the Go only figure. common. Uncommon, I suggested right? it. <laughs> Which still leaves us with two slots. Two mechs. I so want a got, couple of four damage fast mechs. Um, Fenris. Uh, no, that's a wolf. Koshi B. Koshi. Koshi. Koshi B. B. All right. Two Maybe. Koshi let me see. That's, that puts how many? Six mechs in the four, four drop slot? Uh, that might be too many. Yeah. Um, what about something a little cheaper? What about Uller Primes? Two Uller Primes. Uh, you can run it. It actually can be pretty good if you get that and a dash of Prime out. If they have a slow that's start. A seven, that's a seven. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, right. It's got an A and an M buyout. Yeah. yeah. Which we're fine I just with. like the four damage fast mechs because it goes so well with the dash of Primes. But uh, yeah, well, Ollers are very good as well. All right, so that's our mix. We've got four Dasher Primes, four Fenris Primes, and two Grendel Primes in the and slow, in the fasts. Yeah, got comment, two upon, comment upon your those drop slots. What are you guys talking about when you're talking about the drop slots for new players? So you want a curve that has a huge front end. So you want your, your two slots, twos and threes, or you cannot miss. You will lose the game if you whiff on two and three. You have to get mechs out. It, it just, you have to get, have, so you have a huge stack on your twos, threes, and then it, it peters off as you get up to 10. Yeah. Two, like threes for the one. cost. You're talking about the cost, yeah. 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 assuming that you've got the buyout taken care of with your resources. You yeah. should, yeah. Yeah. I usually describe it to new players like a pyramid. You know, your cheap mechs should be the, the big foundation and you have a lot of them. And then as you go up the curve, it gets smaller and smaller as you go. And so, you know, you top out with a few cheap mechs or a few very expensive mechs because one, you only need one or two of them. Two, if you really need more, you can recur them with black market connections. So the deck will play like it has more anyway. Right. Got it. Cool. So that's our 24 mechs. Uh, next up is what are our 12 extras cards that help you win? We're Do not we in a strong position. Are we in a strong position to play risky combat jump? What jumps? We've got, uh, we don't have a lot of jump. We've got the no, Grendels. Blackhawks, Grendels, and the, Black and the uh, Supernova. And that's I it. Would still, I would still run two. Two? It's that I good. <laughs> I would still run two. It's that good. Let's, let's, let's compromise on one. Fair enough. Um, it's a surprise. And, and having, having that, the ability of, of that die roll is so huge with the, the damage reduction and the attack bonus. Okay. I think too, we do we have it? any Smoke Jaguar specific mechs or is it all clan generic? It's all clan I think generic. It's all clan generic. Smoke Jag specific stuff was poor. The early stuff was garbage. Some of the later stuff was better. But uh, looking at you, Stone Rhino. <laughs> What are we even doing that makes this deck a, st- a Smoke Jaguar deck? That's kind of what I was asking is, I mean, there's not a lot in here. And, and really, their better mechs came out later. You know, um, the other Grendels besides the Prime. Um, Ray- uh, Rayokens, right the Storm Ray- Crows. Yeah. But that's the yeah. Prime. I mean, what apart from the Prime and the D for a missile deck, what have you got? The others aren't that good. Grendel D was okay. The Night Jerry's, I think it's oh, C, the nine cost one is pretty decent. But this is all later sets. That's your biggest yeah, yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely Grendel say we, we can kind of say, you know, sprinkle this in for flavor if you have access to the later sets. Sure. Or if you're playing online and you, you can make you can want. make any this this is like a generic clan deck you can make anything out of. Yeah. And people right, can so we're, keep people can plug and play. They're like, oh, right. I got this awesome yeah. mech from Crusade. I'm gonna plug it in for uh, you know right. a man of war or something. So what are what are we looking at? for the 12 cards. So we've picked up a risky combat jump. Um, Overrun. 
Uh, you want an overrun, you want forge mission orders. So let's do yeah. two overruns and two forge mission orders will really keep your opponent guessing. Pushing I like some damage. Superior navigation. Yeah, you're just going down the generic list of missions, I think. This is yeah. a limited like, clan generic deck. Uh, yeah. I like damage prevention as well. Either move uh, the heavy fog or um, some kind of damage pre prevention. Move to surprise. Let's do like move to powerful, she'll cover taking the hit is surprisingly good. Uh, which ones are going to be, Jens? Heavy which fog? Be... Heavy fog. Heavy right. fog is good. How many? Two? Heavy fog is defensive and offensive. Yeah. Well, let's talk, yeah. too. I don't know if any of you guys play. I mean, occasionally I'll play the uh, Singleton Mitchell st mission strategy with a couple of studied moves. And if you have the jumpers, I mean, you have the uh, surprise factor of the missions, but late game you get consistency of which one you pull because you have multiple missions from st uh, multiple initiative studied moves just pulls it back. Well, we're actually starting to 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 get to a point where we have too many missions. Um, I did an, an analysis of this a while back and concluded that without additional card draw, you should have probably about okay. So you should have about six free deploy cards in your deck. If you do more than that, you will start losing optionality because you'll start getting low on your hand. Um, well, why don't we just put Leo Showers in there? Okay. Where's oh, that? The smoke. Uh, there you terrible. go. It's become well, it's, it's, wait, Elias think, Critchell and Leo Showers. Well, I think oh, wait, he, no, no, he, he, he's, had met, he's, he had met he's, a he's Aerospace Falcon. fighter a little bit too close before the Battle of Luthien, I believe. Leo Showers had. Yeah. What's even funnier is he's clan generic. He's still not a smoke jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So my, my theory was that if you're if you're gonna draw, uh, you're gonna draw something like um, a third of your deck as cards, right? So if you have six free deploy cards in your deck, by the end of the game, uh, you will have drawn two or three of them and presumably played them, which will bring your total hand size at the end of the game to two or three cards. If you have more than six and you don't have card draw, then then you're going to sort of play through your hand, which means you're sort of losing optionality because once you've played through your hand, you're always playing the two cards you draw and you don't have an opportunity to say, well, I want to leave this one for next round because this one, this other one is good. So if you this end the game- Black Market Connection is good. Right, but Black Market Connections is, e no, Black Market Connections is even worse because Black Market Connections will also further drain your hand. So but you get what you need. Sure, but- but you still sort of fall behind, like you start not being able to make all the deployments that you have. True. So, so you start the game with five cards in your hand. And if you end the game with five cards in your hand, you're a schmuck because you could have gotten some of those cards down on the table and done something with them. But if you end the game with, if, if you reach a point where you have zero cards in your hand, you're, you're sort of strategically constrained, right? Um, so, you want to play some cards that free deploy, but not too many. Um, assuming you can't replace them, yeah. Assuming you can't replace them. So I guess Leo Showers does help you replace them if you get him, but I wouldn't rely on it. He's way too expensive anyway. I just like, well, he's a smoke jaguar Ilkhan. Let's throw him in there. Well, you could play a couple of uh, backings of the Grand Council. But then, oh, you can't play backing of the Grand Council because we're not using Crusade. No. <laughs> well, let's, well, we'll put then, it in an option. That'll be your sideboard. Right. So, I mean, um, singleton um, assets are actually pretty viable in a war funds environment. But or think tank, you could do think tank. You could put like two think tanks, and if you draw Leo, you, or three think tanks, you draw Leo, you use them. Um, but anyway, if we've got we've got like eight mis uh, seven missions so far: two overruns, two forge mission orders, two heavy fogs, and a risky combat jump. So we should probably select five more cards that do actually take deployments. You know, it's really tough with clans, especially in the early sets. I mean, there just aren't a lot of quality commands to put in. Um, especially, you know, without, like, Inner Spirit, you could get away with it a little bit because the free deploy would cover it, but it's very tough with clans. You can try Arrow a couple four. of terrains. Arrow 4 is a good option. I don't know that clan needs it, but it's a good option. I like it just because sometimes you only have six on the board at fast, yeah. and that, that one damage of structure to a site, and you can always peg for one off the top of the deck. No. All right. It's never so, it's never a bad choice. All right. So two arrow four batteries. 
leaves us is, with three more cards. Is, is it era four a clan like it's a generic. activity? Like no, it's, the, it's, the a, clan, it's a command the clan, card. Clan use uh, artillery. It's the last thing Smoke the Jaguar matter? would ever do. <laughs> ever. Yeah. So, it's like, I don't know. I think we're breaking rules there. We we should, I guess we should put Orbital Bombardment in there and just be done with it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Gosh. Um, yeah. Uh, what about the, the regular old elemental point? <sighs> it's so bad. Um, is it because it doesn't work? <laughs> is it that bad? It's a deployment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, is a deployment. Two it counts as a deployment. Yeah. It's two damage. Yeah. All right. Um, so play all months deploy errata, so it's a free deploy. Problem solved. Uh, no. You could put Paul Moon in there. Uh, we're not using our later. Oh yeah, we can't use. Um, um, uh, it's yeah. getting tough here. Like I said, the reason you see so many you know ten plus mission clan decks is there's just not a lot of quality in the uh, command if, section. If to put are we fight, are we yeah. using uh, Arsenal? No. We're not, and we're not using logistics either, which means we can't call on hidden reserves to replenish our hand of missions. Because then you got hidden reserves and you got trial of blood right. Well, we don't have any pilots here either. Or um, not trial of blood right. What's the one I'm thinking about? Trial of grievance. Trial of grievance. Are, trial and grievance is draw a card and, and give me all my resources. Uh, yeah, Solves um, many problems. Mm. What about. It actually be pretty good. What in this about deck too, assault on the it rear would. Echelon. It would be. AMT with. Trial of Grievance seems like a perfect solution. Right. What were you saying, what Michael? What about Assault on the Rear Echelon? 2 4 T, scrap when revealed for the rest of the turn, each a patrolling unit that blocks is depleted. An interesting stalemate breaker. Possibly. And is Smoke Jaguar going to come to the rear, or are they just going to come to your face and say, we're going to underbid you, and then we're going to lose to you? Exactly. You're yeah. making my life really difficult here. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, and then after we lose, over. we're going to get really mad and we're going to orbitally bombard you because <laughs> we messed yeah. up earlier on. Um, yeah. yeah, I think a couple of think tanks and orbital bombardment and uh, you've got your uh, smoke jaguar. Uh, that's orbital a tank that screams for uh, hidden reserves, though. Yeah. Because it scraps um, cards from hand, so... Yeah, I think we have to have hidden, hidden reserves. I, I think we have to have hidden reserves. Well, we can play whip with no arsenal, but we need. Uh... We just have think tanks. We'll just play uh, two or three think tanks in the deck, and we will All right. hopefully get. Well, remember, we're not in. doing war funds either. Oh, oh, we're not. You're arsenal. making my life arsenal. really hard. Dude, like... Arsenal. All right. Um, well, are we gonna let's uh people can we have talked about so many cards. People can right. substitute if they don't have the cards. We've in, given them so many options here. Let's so throw let's... in three hidden locations. Two hidden locations, no, uh, two hidden locations and a Leo showers and an orbital bombardment. That brings us to 37 cards. You should probably drop a mission. I don't know. I'm going to be the guy that says this is hidden location, a clan like tactic. Not hit, sorry, wrong word. Hidden reserves, not hidden location. Hidden reserves, yeah. Reserve. Very I'm different sorry, card. my mistake. Um, I mean, if we're open up politics, you can almost do veteran officer too, but only it pulls missions. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's keep it simple. Hidden reserves. Uh, about three hidden res no, two hidden reserves. So we're at uh, we're still at thirty-seven. We probably want to be at thirty-six. We do want to be at thirty-six because I want to so make sure we play missions? enough think tanks. Uh, two two heavy fog, two overrun, two forge mission orders, and a risky combat jump. Lose my risky combat jump. We don't have enough mechs with jump All to right. make it. So right. say, if you're going to include that, you probably should run Shadowcat Prime over uh, Vulture C. All right. Uh, well, we're good. So we've got 36 cards. Now we need 24 resources. So all we're right. going to need some review. Things. Review that one for me real quick. All right. Let's review all our non-mech cards. So all right. Non-mech cards. Two overruns, two heavy fogs, and two forge mission orders are a very nice, simple set of uh, missions. All from lim oh, Most from limited. One, two, one of those is from Counter-Strike. Right. And All of those then, are common too. Uh, no, heavy fog is uncommon, but still. Oh, Leo showers. showers and orbital bombardment are our two politics rares, and then we've got um, th uh, two hidden reserves and two arrow four batteries. Oh, where we take it? We were taking arrow four out, right? That was not smoke jaguar. Are we? <laughs> <They're>, smoke jaguar <laughs> is not going to use arrow four. Ah. Uh, uh, 
You're the correct us, thing right? to do. Okay, so go back up to a seventh mission and a third hit in reserves then. Sounds yeah. good. So third hit in reserves, and we'll put the risky combat jump back. Yeah. Now, if you're going to run risky, I mean, do you want Shadow Cat Prime over Vulture C? Shadow Cat Prime. What set did it come for, out in? For all four of them? Yeah. I mean, because it has, it has jump. jump. Yeah. It has jump. Okay, let's that, do that. It's lighter on the assets, although what it's set munitions. Is it? oh, that's what I'm asking. I don't know what set it's from. Is it Mech Warrior? Or is it straight up uh, Commander's it's Ars edition? A Shadow Cat. Oh, Shadow Cat A and B are Arsenal. Yeah, but well, I was thinking Prime. A oh. and B, I don't know about. If people have access to those, they can do a Shadow Cat Prime plus Risk of Combat. And if they don't have Shadow Cat Prime, they can do Vulture uh, never, C. Shadow Cat Prime was Crusade. Never mind. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. So then uh, a seventh mission, let's just make it a studied move. No, we don't even have that much jump, so that's not going to be great. Nope. What, what would you throw in there? Just a single good shooting, maybe? You need a good surprise. If you're going to run a singleton, I usually run a big surprise mission. Um, Taking the hit is a good singleton. Reactor breach. Uh, oh, I like heroic, reactor breach. Heroic sacrifice would be a good final mission for them. Did, did we decide we are not running this rare intensive? Because you can throw I am a huge, huge, huge fan of superior navigation. In All right, two. one superior navigation. <laughs> okay. Just a huge one. fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, so, people know if they can run superior nav, if they have it, otherwise heroic sacrifice. Or just any old mission card that, that you think looks interesting and you want to see how it plays. There you go. Perfect. All right, so now 24 resources. So what, uh, four think tanks? Three? Th we've, got, we've got a lot of L in here now. Yep, four think tanks. Yeah. Uh, L gets much trickier. Four resources gets much trickier without war funds. Yeah, well, but... P is only two cards. It's only going to come up very rarely. Wait, we have P and L and AMT. We have five uh, assets. Yeah, we got. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know about this, that. This is yeah. legit. This, this is why Smoke Jaguar lost. Honestly, right. they had no logistics, and their politics were a huge mess. It's <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I think you need to backtrack there. I think Leo and uh, either the hidden reserves or else Leo and the, the uh, orbital bombardment. All right, let's drop sure. Leo and the orbital bombardment and let's make it. It's a literally a generic clan deck. What are we going to put instead? Put the Arrow Forge back in? Well, if we're trying to do Smoke Jags, let me think. But there's nothing Smoke Jag here. Like, literally nothing. There's not a single Smoke Jaguar card in there. No. All right, let's keep Leo. Let's say go buy some more funds on eBay if you don't have them. Definitely, right. get, definitely get some think tanks. And you have. Oh, forget, if we're gonna if we're gonna allow some of the cheaper arsenal resources, we've got um, weapons depot as well. And backing of the Grand Council. No, that's yes, right. we do. That's, no, that's All right, so we're just gonna throw a smattering of these things in here. So then we don't need as many think tanks. Let's make it like two think tanks, two weapons depots, two backings of the Grand Council. Yeah, I feel better about that already. I'll be willing to pay one for a resource that gives me two assets. Yeah. Actually, uh, I mean, if we're opening that up, you know, your trial of grievance idea is sounding better and better every time. <laughs> if we have every asset in there. I, I do uh, like, and then you just, boom, you play, you play four trial of grievances and you automatically get the resource you need and it replaces itself for when, when you need to have the buyout for that all right, card. So what are, so what are you gonna, what are you gonna dump to it, get well, four trials of grievance? You're probably going to dump a mission to mix a, 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 a mission, a mech, and a resource for three, maybe. I'd play four if we're going to do it's. We have A, M, P, T, and L. So what are you going to dump? What's the fourth thing you're going to dump? I'd take out one of the hidden reserves if I'm playing four trial grievances. All right. So one hidden reserve's gone. One. Uh, we'll take out the uh, superior nav, um, and we'll take out a mech. Pick a mech. Take out one of the 10 drops. I'm not going to miss that as much. All right. I'll take out the um, supernova. And then we've got four trial of grievance. So now we're talking about 23 resources, 23 mechs, 10 other cards, and four trials of grievance. Um, That's fair. Right. So what are our um, what are our uh, twenty three resources with trials of grievance in there? 
Do we still have war funds? Uh, do you still need it if you're using trial of grievance? Yes. Yes. All right. So let's shove in what two of them. Yeah, this is. I mean, it, it's very tough to say here. This will be easy to collect and throw trial of grievance and war funds in there. In five well, assets. Well, trial of grievance is an arsenal of common. It's not yeah. that bad. Right. And war funds is also an arsenal of common. So let's just throw two war funds in. Two black market connections. And then that leaves us 19 to play with for our actual AMT, or do we want to shove in like a weapons depot or backing of the Grand Council? Because you can get in trouble if you have too many resources that cost more than one, maybe more than zero. I would put okay. one of each in. I think All so right. too, yeah. One weapons depot. One back in the Grand Council. That leaves us with 17 resources. How would you split it? Have you already uh, accounted for the think tanks? Uh, we took the think tanks out. Okay. Think tanks are gone. Probably 764. Seven assembly? You need it for the dashers. Your problem is you only have five munitions for the others, uh, or six munitions for the others, and then you still got to pull the tactics. It's going to be tight either way, especially with only two war funds. But yeah, those trial grievances are going to have to come up big time. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, you've got a mulligan option if you don't have a trial grievance in your opening hand. All right. So seven assembly, four munitions, and six tactics. All right. So let's talk through this one last time. Um, so six so tactics. Is that what you said? Seven, six, seven, four? Seven, six, four. Yeah. Seven, yes. I think you need six munitions, though. Well, you've already tests. got you've got them from backing of the Grand Council and from Weapons Depot. All right. I mean, nobody's saying this is a great deck, right? I don't think anyone is saying this is a great deck. <laughs> no, right. but this deck has how many rares in it? One. One Two. rare. Orbital orbital bombardment and Leo showers. I'll give those away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me address so, and I'll mail it to you. Uh, that's right. <laughs> All right. So let's now we have to it. be a moderately bad companion deck for Curita slash Calhound slash Wolf Dragoon slash Federated Commonwealth. Right. Oh man, uh, that's going to be hard because there's a lot of really good cards for Curita and Wolf Dragoons uh, that obviously why they won. Yes. Yeah, but in the early sets, um, we're playing fleas, fleas and flashmans. No. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Um, so we're going with, we're going to allow, it's going to be a Karita deck. So I'm turning off all of my, going through my filters here. Cool. So mix. 24 mix. What are we doing? We're using, uh, our asset base. Let's look at our asset base. And I do want to include M because Karita with M uh is good well although a lot of karita's best m cards are late they're late sets yeah they're that's not early true. sets yeah that's, that's true. true they're much more am in the early like you have the jenners they got a yep. lot of mechless stuff too like the hanamoto she and grand dragon are both uh assetless yeah i like the mauler that's an a that... am the mauler it's got a missile one didn't we just say that that's a that's a kiss of death <laughs> I know, and it's a rare, but I love the mech. And it was in the it was in that cartoon, cartoon. that you were watching, Peter, wasn't it? As That's a side note, yes. You know, I, let me let me go off on a segment here. And I mean, because we started off, um, I, I got into BattleTech because I had a couple of friends in like third or fourth grade, and they brought in some of the toys from the cartoon show, and I wanted to play too. And the first thing I saw was that Mauler. So the Mauler was the first mech I was ever attached to in BattleTech, and yeah, it has Preach a place. It, Peter, in put yeah. it in the deck. There you go. It's terrible. But it's a horrible it's, it's a horrible right, mech, but one, it's iconic. It's iconic. It is, it is very iconic. All right, one molar. Fine. So are we gonna go back to AMT again? I like AMT. All right, AMT. Cool. So what are our what's our what's our fast screen, first of all? Because we're gonna think what about you Jenners. You get Jenners, Jenners and spiders. spiders. We don't have spider revised, do we? We'd have to go with the originals. I think you yep. have to have the two damage versions. But do, we want the, do we want the Jenner that does the one point of overheat or the Jenner that does the two points of overheat? I would do both oh. and make them my only fast mix. I would, I would do play four of each. Four Jenners be... and four Jenners. Okay, any yeah. other? Yep. Anything That's eight fast else? Max. 
you have to have some Panthers in your deck. You can't be a curator without some Panthers. They did yeah, not are. convert well, man. <laughs> they oh, are we bad. Do we, we'll do Panthers, Dragons, Hatamotos, yeah. Yeah. Um, Grand right. Dragon, four, four costs, no buyout. Grand Dragon's not bad. Yeah, Grand not Dragon's bad. solid. Notice how, by the way, uh, the Karita deck is like all Karita so far. Notice nothing, nothing generic yet. I, right. I think it really just shows the difference, like because the early clan cards you had some really good stuff, and the rest was just overpriced junk. And the Smoke yep. Jags had a lot of problems with that in the early sets. Well, remember, we can be bringing in Steiner and Davian Mex. Eh, let's not. Let's just stick with Karita plus Mercenary. Because the Karita doesn't need to. That's the nice thing about Karita. We can well, if you want. They're, we'll they're very versatile, but, but you can just go pure Karita all the way through. I'll tell you, I, if you want right. to show side cards like that, Travis, you know, I mean, we could look at something like trying to force in um, uh, Wolf Dragoons. What is it? Contract with Wolf Dragoons? We'll definitely have to put in Contract with Wolf Dragoons. Yeah. It's uh, AM, AMT with a little tiny side of P. It's going to have to be. All right. I want to put in a plug for the Centurion D. Oh, yeah. It's so, absolutely I mean, fine. No problem. It's a, it's a great, it's a backbone. It's probably the, yeah, it's one, one six, of the best two, two mechs in the game. Great alpha strap. Um, what else looks good? What What's our backliners? The gunslinger? Can we do the gunslinger? I like the gunslinger warrior? and the Seabrius. I think I think we should stay on theme and do the gunslinger. I think it works better because of the it provides e, uh, ECM. It's only one more expensive than the Cer than the Cerberus. No buyouts either. Cerberus has a logistics. An L logistics. We can't do. We're not. If we're gonna do L, if we're gonna throw in a little bit of politics this time, I don't think we want logistics. No, that's fair. Um, all right, so two gunslingers, uh, and we're now at. Should look 19. at some alternates for that. We got five more. Is that is um, the gunslinger a rare? No, it's an uncommon. I think it's a late set though, isn't it? It's uh, mercenaries. mercenaries. Oh, mercenaries. Never mercenaries. mind. I'll stop. I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so we what we need, I think, with our last five cards is we need like the back line, like the four and the five costs, mediums and slows. I'm I'm a huge fan of the Grand Dragon at four cost with no we were, buyout. We already it's, got I love the Grand the Dragon. Oh, we already got him. Yeah. There's not a lot in the medium speed bracket for five, at least not in the earlier sets. Um, do they have access to the uh, DayQ, or is that too late? I think that's Mech Warrior. We're, we're allowing Mech Warrior. The DayQ's totally uh, – DayQ's a six cost, but it's definitely solid. Uh, yeah, there's not much in the five slot that's really great at the medium speed bracket. If you go down to the slow, there's a couple options. You can try I like some the Gallo Glass. Gallo Glass, yeah, it's slow. That's my only real – Let's like throw in you, have, you have to attack with it. Let's it's fantastic as an attacking mech, especially if we can put. Are we going to be able to put in some redline pilots? I'm just throwing that out there, but I like redline pilots. Because oh, yeah, if we're thinking see. the amount of overheat that we have available to us in this deck, I mean, if you just check your mechs with overheat so far, Travis, how many mechs with overheat well, do we have? We've got the Grand right Dragons. Lineup? We've got the Grand Dragons. We've got the Janners. We've got the Mauler, Solo Mauler. And we've got the Gallo Glass that we're talking about. Um, the ones that don't, we've got the Daikus, but they can go. We've got I'd say Hatamoto Cheese over the Daiku then, and let's let's get some overheat pilots on there. Okay, Hatamoto Cheese. Uh, so do we want and... Deep Lake too? We got oh, the Jenners. Yeah. <laughs> let's the do Jenners. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Deep Lake right. it is. All right. So do we're we get at... mapped lakes, or are we just <laughs> that's probably Red, too much. So I don't think we is... get to play maps. <laughs> That's so we're at 23 mix. We've got in the cheap slots, we've got eight Jenners and four Centurions. In the mid slots, we've got two Hatamoto Cheese and four Grand Dragons and two Gallo Glasses and the Molar. And in the heavy X slot, we have two Gunslingers. One more, no, uh, one more mech. And what are those two Jenners? Michael, just for people. Uh, Jenner 7D and the Jenner 7K. Both of them are one, two, two fasts for two. One of them is an overheat one plus one. The other has an overheat two plus two. Okay. So what else do you want to throw in there? Do we want to go out on a limb and do something crazy like a Naginata or something? Which is like, it's got overheat, but it's a missile boat. Eh, it's got C3, which you're paying for and you're getting yeah. nothing. Yeah, it's wasted. Oh, I don't like that. Um... A falcon hawk if we want to go down the cheap end. 
They can run 23 mechs too, depending on how many missions and commands you have. That's true. It's not a bad thing to have 23 mechs when we're thinking about the number of overheat pilots that we're going to have. All right. Well, let's see. Let's deal with that and, and come back to it later. All right. So, uh, not units. So you want four red line pilots. Obviously. Now the question is, we're allowing Solaris contacts? I don't think it's too bad with red lines. I think it's too bad. Yeah. With the red lines, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So let's put two Solaris contacts in there. But uh, do you count this, that under the this, resource quantities or under the non-resource This is Curita, guys. I don't think Curita hangs out on Solaris very often. Sure they do. Yes, they do. Absolutely. Yeah. It's only on the far side of the inner sphere. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I, I mean, the deck, so I don't know what you know. Solaris context is more or less what makes pilot decks tick. Um, because it lets again, you put them in, because yeah. of the deployment cost, the, right? The deployment right. cost of command cards is a pain in the ass. Yep. You, so, you have to have a way to get a command card on a mech without paying a deployment cost, one of your two that are so essential, and two, paying the cost of a pilot that, in my favorite pilot's cost, is six, yeah. um, where you can get an amazing mech for that equivalent, but you get it back right. for free. Because you've got to remember, for folks, uh, for folks who are beginners, um, you've got to think about the opportunity cost. It's not just that pilot card could be a mech. It's also that pilot card will die when the mech it's on is destroyed. Right, and so whoever, wherever you put the pilot, the pi that mech is going to get targeted, and you're going to lose two cards at the same time. Um, and so you generally have, you generally have only three options. Your first option is to put a pilot on a mech that is never going to get into a real fight. And this is like Dash or D Elite Mech Warrior. Any time that you're putting a pilot on a fast mech, and you're thinking this fast mech is never going to get in a fight, I'm never going to let it, right? So that's, that's one approach. Your second approach is to put a pilot on a very heavy mech, which is to say, yes, it takes a lot of effort to kill this guy, um, so I don't feel too bad about putting, my, putting an enhancement on him. And uh, this works especially well if you have cards like Heavy Fog, because you can say, oh, you put in all this effort to kill this guy, but actually I kept him alive, and now I'm going to move him from my crippled gunslinger to my non-crippled Grand Dragon, for example. And your third option is to to make pilot play sufficiently cheap that you're not particularly concerned that, that your opponent could kill him in a twofer. All right, so we got- so oh, Medivac we team? Can, is Medivac uh, team available to us? It's a we can bring those pilots I back? I would yeah. assume probably not. Let's just use okay. black market connections for that. Let's just black market connections to bring them back. Uh, Travis, to make this simple, no Solaris contacts and lore wise isn't so doesn't make a ton of sense with Karita, but if you don't run it, the entire pilot theme has to be scrapped and we're gonna start again. Got it. Yeah. Right. Your call. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep yeah. we'll put in two Solaris contacts and a couple of war funds. It should be fine. Um cool. So we are still at we'll call four it your Yakuza contacts. We'll just draw it out on the card, right? Yakuza. What about missions? You know, you wanted custom cards. So that's a good one to do right there. Because all you're really doing is reflavoring it. Yep. Exactly. Perfect. What about some missions? We've already got the red line. Sacrifice for the make. dragon. Really? Yes, really, <laughs> really. If we're going to go theme, really. All right. <laughs> well, it is a rare, but it's not that hard to find because it's limit. It's in limited, unlimited, and commander's edition. Let's put in one sacrifice for the dragon. How about um, a singleton reassigned pilot? Uh, is that going to? That's going to save a dude, isn't it? Yeah, so you can move them into combat after they've already um, initiative's been declared and suddenly have an overheater with two extra damage and takes no damage. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, right. I see what you mean. Damage. Right. Yeah. Okay, a singleton reassigned pause. That's two. Um, yeah. What other good supporting cards do we have? Um, We've got Deep Lake, right? Let's throw in two Deep Lakes. If I'm using pilots, I want ways to keep them alive. So taking the hit is very good. Um, wait, wait, why Deep Lake? Redline Pilot already solves our problem. Yeah, but you don't always have one. You don't have it. But if we got four Redline Pilots... You're still not always going to have it. I, it this, is, right. this is the redundancy. We can't so put six of everything in it, so we're putting two Deep Lakes and two Redline Pilots. I would have. I thought we were putting four Redline Pilots four red and two pilots. Deep Lakes. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. 
Yeah. All right. Great. All right. So we're at two plus four plus five. Uh, we're at eight, I think. We've got four more slots for interesting things. We've got the four pilots, the two missions, and the two deep lakes. Two more. No, four more. We're not single combat, please. Uh, single combat, but well, I guess okay. Two single combats, one single combat. How about a uh, lured into bog? A lured into bog, yeah. One lured into bog, one single combat. How about an overwhelm? Uh, How about a move to partial cover? Overwhelm and a move to partial cover. Fine. I think I'd rather, yeah, in a pilot deck, I'd rather have taken the hit than move to partial cover. Especially with the I mean, I, either one keeps the pilot alive, but, you know, preventing all the damage to the mech is usually beneficial because you don't always have a ton of overheaters to swap the uh, red line to. That's true. We're not, let's we're probably the, not going to. Let's drop the overwhelm then and put in the taking the hit. Yeah. All right. So our non mech stuff is one taking the hit. One uh, move to partial cover, one sacrifice for the dragon, one reassigned pilot, four red line pilots, one single combat, um, one lured into bog, and two deep lakes. So that's 12. Um, we still have one, one floater, because we're putting the two Solaris contacts in with the resources. Um, so that leaves us with one floater that we could figure out something for later. So now resources. Oh, contract with Wolf's Dragoons. Yeah, it what was are we there doing here? all along. Um, oh, we should add a contract with Calhounds as well, um, which means we have to drop one thing. Drop the uh, moves to partial cover because taking the hit is better for a pilot All right, deck. great. So there we go. Yeah. Well, so every now, tool I get to defend them, but yeah. So for resources, two Solaris contacts, two war funds, two black market connections. This is just by the numbers. Then what? That leaves us with 18 cards. So let's see, our baseline is Centurions, which are A, and Jenners, which are AM. So that's gonna form the basis of most of what we do. Do we have anything in the three drop slot? Uh, no, we don't. Um, so, okay. But we actually, our T use is relatively limited. The only mix that we have that take T are the two gallow glasses. Um, plus the so missions. we could go light on, plus the missions. Yeah. We could go light on T. Well, so if we don't pull a Solaris contacts, Redline Pilot doesn't take, it does take tactics, doesn't it? It, it does. does. Yes. Yeah. What about seven assembly, six munitions, five tactics? I might do eight, six, four. Oh, wait a minute, seven, we, need, six, we need some politics. We need some politics. We have to have politics or you're playing a think tank, one or the other. Right, what about or outreach Com mercenary Star. training? Comstar. What about outreach mercenary training if we're gonna do it that, that way? That's true, but uh, I mean, Comstar is, can, is a one cost that can give us whatever we want. And outreach mercenary training gives us PT. Well, the L though, right? could be useful, but they don't have anything needs L. No, it'd just be for restocking late. Yeah, um, which which is a late game, which is which is often what you do with your think tank anyway. At late game, is you scrap it for logistics so you can get that one restock, giving you uh, one extra health every turn. All right, you reckon Comstar support? Yes, sir. So two Comstar supports. Do we want to create a high commander? Is that too late? Just for kicks and giggles. It's too late. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. and you have to have Another a edition. Commander's Edition yeah, box so thing open as well. Right. That's hard. Right. So so that means we now have 16 to play with for we're actually getting pretty close to the to the limit here because only 16 zero cost resources in a deck isn't great. Um, yeah, that's true. I'd like to, to recap, have 18. To recap, we've got two war funds, two Solaris contacts. Um, two Comstar supports uh, and two black market connections. Can we go one and one on the Comstar support and, and, and the mercenary tank. outreach? I didn't. Uh, yes, we can. 
that doesn't that doesn't change the situation. I think one of those should be a think tank. That yeah. should get us to seventeen. All right. Is it the Comstar or the Outreach Missionary Training? I would probably keep the Comstar just because it's more versatile. What okay. is Outreach? PT. Outreach yeah, gives now, us How much structure does it have? Uh, it's a 3-3, three, three, and the Comstar support is also a 3-3. Three, three, three. Three. So structure same. So let's think here. Is there any situation where we're going to get actually get the L? Because I think that's how many other sources of P do we have? None. So it's always going to be P. So there's really no reason to get the comp star support then. Is that because you're never going to get an L because you always have to have P. But we do only have two cards that eat P. Right. They're expensive though, aren't they? They're like five and six buyouts. Oh, you definitely want don't. Uh, well, yeah. forget that. It's that you have to keep paying for them. And then if you don't. You have to you pay extra three, Peter, every time. Do you ever pay for your contracts or do you just use Not them once and off? They go. No, yeah. <laughs> so, so here's the additional question. If we're going to play contracts and we have two cards that provide P, we're going to have to defend them. I think the think tanks are actually a better solution over the Comstar support and the um, and the outreach mercenary training because um, they solve all the cost of one and we get it forever. Yes, well, yes. And not only that, uh, it's six uh, resources. There's a lot of three damage mechs, especially fast and clan. And I know in the decks we made specifically, there's at least eight with the yeah, so, and so we'll lose it. We'll lose them. So better to anyway. have a think tank. Yeah. Yep. All right. So two think tanks, and now we've got sixteen to cover A, M, and T. It's not fantastic. Six five five. I like seven five four. Where's four? Tactics. It's tactics. Because all we tactics. have to worry about is the is the gallo glass and the in the in the mission cards. Because I you. Yeah, I mean, we've got the Centurion that has to be bought out. We are not paying the assembly I mean, buyout on that. Yeah, but you still right. got eight more two drops that cost A and M. You only yeah, got five true. sources. It's rough. It's really rough. What if we uh, drop some missions, move the Solaris contacts into the other category, and add a couple of resources? Here's what we're It'll playing in our, in our other cards. We'll flood. Um, yeah, we'll yeah, flood we're, we're, our low end is so high. Peter, we've got we've got so much at that low end at the, at the two two drop as far yeah. as our curve goes that if we have any more resources, it's it's just going to be a flood city. My top end is a gunslinger, just two of them, and the just next two. thing below it is a four is a five two five costs. So this deck's looking to get to five resources and then stop and drop two a turn after that. Ish. Maybe so. yeah, about that much. Yep. Um, maybe more with the gunslingers, but. Yeah, just throw it to the player. Dude, try it. See how it goes. This isn't perfect, but yeah. Well, you'd want six total for the Solaris contacts. I guess you are going to burn the two think tanks. That should be a consideration too. They won't That's, count. They're yeah, not going to so, count. One's going to be politics. One's going to be yeah. logistics. So maybe you won't flood. Well, how, I don't know. It's something you really have to play to know. Yeah. How much are it's we going to free out? It free up if we drop those contracts, those mercenary contracts, just the. Uh, we're going to free up all of our self-respect because contracts that are is, terrible. That's the theme, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, we kind of we kind of like walked from the theme with Smoke Jaguars, so I think it's we're fine. we're talking more about an early Smoke Jaguar incursion over Battle of Luthien at this point. It's right? fine. Yeah, yeah. We we left orbital bombardment in there, didn't we? And Leo showers. We left orbital bombardment. So we, in there. we if, if we leave those two in, we have to keep the contract with the Kelhound and the contract with Wolf Dragoon. That's the balance that, 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 bad. that is the bad theme that's going. Okay. Not to be clear, none of these cards would ever show up in a mid tier, let alone upper tier. Hey, what's no. important is are they going to have fun playing against each other? Yes, they will. I think so. They will. I think, I think they will. So. Now, if they're balancing against each other, I have no idea, but. Yeah, I mean, if if, if you want to Could make it a, so that that it's a for sure thing that Karita wins, throw in six Saladins or four Saladins. Yeah, well, we don't want to do that. Yeah. We want it to be a game yeah. because I, Saladins I will make it so that there's there's it's it's going to be a zero chance for the clan. Yeah. But these we're not going to do that. Starting points. Yeah, these are fun starting points, but you really have to test them to know if they're really balanced yeah, against each other. We'll, we'll put the card list in the show notes. I've got most of yeah. these cards. My girlfriend and I we're going to go at it tonight. We're going to test it out. <laughs> All right. What, are, what, what was the final? What was the final AMT breakdown? 
7A, 5M, and 4T. Okay. I'm going to be honest. It probably should be 763, as ugly as that is. We could do that. What what takes T? The Solaris. Well, our context. Solaris contacts, our pilots, and our missions, and yeah, we could still Solaris... scrap a think tank for T as well if, if we if yeah, it comes if down we, to it. If we get um, uh, if we get a war funds, we're not going to be we're not going to have a problem with um, with getting the Solaris contacts down. And um, if we get we're not we're not going to we're trying not to pay for red line pilots anyway. So I'm not that right. worried about it. I think your biggest problem, you have to hit AM on tier two, on turn two. Yeah. Which is, you know, you have two think tanks, two war funds. So there's, what was it, eight assemblies. So 12 sources of A, assuming you're willing to burn the war funds or the think tank. Um, uh, and then 11 sources of M, again, assuming you're willing to burn the think tank or the uh, uh, war funds, which I'm not sure I would be willing to do. I think we, I think, no, I think we have uh, uh, no, I think I eleven sources of A and ten sources of. of All right, a. you guys aren't going to like this question. War funds are kind of tricky to find. If I we have to drop war funds, what am I replacing with think tanks? Yeah, okay. no. I'd replace you, them with one Solaris contact and one think tank. Okay. Or yeah. two Solaris contacts. <laughs> war funds. Look, <laughs> here's the thing about war funds: the most powerful ability in any CCG is always deck search, right? Deck search by definition is, is, is the, the most important and dangerous thing like, that you can get. Um, war funds is, is a huge spike in power over any, other, um, over any other resource. It's always the right answer in every deck. I personally view that as a problem, even yeah. though everybody can access it. Yeah. At a common slot, everybody should have six in a deck. It, that doesn't matter which deck. I wouldn't necessarily say six, but I would say at least three in every deck. Any deck, uh, the decks that we're building that have three or more resources, yes, I would say six. Um, yeah, so it's it's an issue. Like, a, a, you know, the, the errata that I put in, I pointed to it in the show notes from the previous show, was, uh, first of all, the idea that you could tap or like the, the scrap ability required a tap action as well so that you couldn't tap for resources and then scrap it. And then the other thing that, that I put in there, um, this was again with help from Mark, the idea was um, that it can only grab resources that provide assets, which means no Solaris content, you can't grab Solaris contacts with it, you can't gla grab black market connections with it. Um, and I think that the combination of those two changes bring it back down to a sort of a rational power level. I'm curious for your thoughts. It does. Absolutely. It's a huge yeah. nerf. But you'd still play it in a deck. Yeah. Right. But I, it's wouldn't play, it's, I wouldn't play six. Right. It's that I have three assets and I want to make sure I get my assets. More fun solves that problem for me. But it doesn't also fetch... Random. So there's contact so. so I can put Kai down on turn three. Right. And it also doesn't allow you to, because the tap, it's tap or, it doesn't allow you to up your tempo. Um, there's, a, there's a really cool, like, a, the, the other Daishi deck that says use double overtime to get the Daishi B out on turn three and then use, um, use Omnimech Podcast to swap it for a Widowmaker and attack on turn three relies on using the ability of War Funds to tap for a resource and then scrap itself to boots, you know, to grab a field construction site and tap that and then scrap, and scrap that. It. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to bootstrap yourself, right? So the, the the way that War Funds affects your tempo is really significant. I still think it's a solid card, um, even with those nerfs, just not as dominant. Think Tank becomes more practical to use, and anyone who's playing, you know, black market connections or Solaris contacts is having to think about. If I don't have enough of these cards, how will I be sure to get them? And if I have too many of them, um, how am I going to get rid of my excess? It becomes, it becomes more competitive. Anyway, that's my little plug. Got our two decks, so I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna put them in the description below. Other people can, can try them out that are listening and see if we did a good job. Or we can tweak them. People can uh, comment with their tweaks, and we can kind of get two two good thematic decks. I, I think fun. the 
I think the fun part of this was less about the outcome of what are the decks, but more about like, what is the thought process of constructing? Oh yeah, that's why I asked you. That's why. <laughs> I want to hear all you guys talk and people can kind of hear why you're going back and forth between why I had this and take that. That's, that's the value there. Speaking of deck construction, one thing that I'd be really interested in is mm. hearing um, Gustav and Peter deconstruct um, some tier one deck and explain why the bits are in it that are Why there. that is a good mech. Or, or why why a person did what they did? Like why are these cards here? Um, all right, Michael, pick that deck. All right, this is going to be yeah, our last I, thing. All right, I think right. I know which one because we talked yeah, about this. Yeah, I'm going to pick the Gorge uh, the, Master. The Gorge Master. I want you guys to explain how the Gorge Master works and why it works. Because the first time I saw this thing, I did not understand it, and it it opened up doors in my mind to how you might build a deck that were completely closed before. Hello, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and sign off there and leave you with a little bit of teaser for uh, the third part of this conversation that I had with the guys. Uh, it is a very good compliment to this episode. A lot of very high level in depth discussion, kind of breaking down a world championship winning deck and a world championship winning deck that was definitely thinking outside of the box for its time. And so definitely check that out. I'll kind of link it up here and that that will pop up or you can just kind of find it by surfing the channel. Um, and, uh, and yeah, enjoy and kind of learn what you can. Uh, in this episode, uh, I will be putting down in the description uh, deck list for what we came up as kind of the final versions of these after we did a little play testing and made sure that they did provide a good thematic uh, kind of fun uh, <laughs> tabletop experience. Um, or you can play them on Lackey, you can play them on Tabletop Simulator whatever it is and uh, and for sure to compliment that check the pinned comment down below I'm gonna outline the giveaway for this episode we are going to be I'm not quite sure of the final product so we're definitely gonna be giving away a clan smoke Jaguar and a curita with allies deck um, as the kind of prize for that giveaway Though, uh, in order to kind of participate in that giveaway, there'll be a couple criteria, but kind of the most exciting is going to be inviting you guys to throw out your own kind of uh, Smoke Jaguar and uh, Curita themed decks to kind of uh, mix it up. Uh, no restrictions, no restrictions in terms of rarity, no restrictions in terms of what deck, uh, what expansion sets that we're drawing from. Throw out your best, uh, best candidates for each of those sides. And then uh, we'll kind of go through those comments and kind of pick pick the ones we like, and uh, we'll use those for kind of the the prize uh, for that giveaway if they're better than what uh, the guys here come up with, uh, kind of through their play testing. So a lot of fun there. Uh, and if there's anybody out there that you know has a big collection um, and doesn't need those cards, then I'll kind of throw a pack of uh, Crusade or something out there so you can enjoy kind of opening a, a nice kind of premiere uh, sealed pack yourself, which is kind of hard to find these days uh, since the product's 20 years out. Out of, out of production but uh but that's it uh one final thing uh i would encourage you guys please check out the patreon for this channel uh i would love to kind of build up the support that like, coming from that avenue to help cover some of the expenses uh for this channel a lot of kind of hosting services and some of the kind of design software uh that i needed to pick up that i didn't necessarily have already for for my other work uh if the patreon and the support through that you know people contribute in a buck or two here or there every month um that would be awesome that would really help me out and uh and kind of support me and kind of continuing to deliver this content to you guys uh, as this channel grows uh, and in the meantime check out the other videos a lot of stuff about the tcg a little bit of stuff already kind of outside the tcg and definitely with a lot of uh kind of shows in production uh that will be kind of continuing just uh either uh sitting down with uh developers or um, kind of the, the the writers, the authors of Battletech. Uh, I'm gonna try to connect with some of the artists of Battletech too to talk about their experiences. So a lot of awesome ideas uh, for future content for Renegade HPG. So your support uh, will definitely help make that happen. And in the meantime, uh, you know, be sure you're commenting down below, interacting. I love to hear back uh, from you guys and get kind of all those different kind of stories about your own experience in the game. But uh, that's it. Uh, this is Travis uh, signing off and uh, I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.